Hey guys, welcome back to our series on recreating Ableton's beat repeat device in Reactor. In this video, we'll be implementing the main audio engine so we can test our work from the previous video and we'll be all set up to uh, implement the rest of the features in beat repeat. So to begin, I'm going to create a new knob and this is going to be our grid knob that determines the length of the stutter. It's going to have 16 values, so I'm going to let it range from 0 to 15. And we can duplicate a multi-text from one of our other knobs here to create the visual display. And once again, we're going to have to enter a whole bunch of numbers into our multi-text. So we've got 1 over 256, 1 over 128, 1 over 96, 1 over 64, um, so on and so forth. So these are just all of the different time values that Ableton lets you select. And as I mentioned in the previous video, adding new um, time signatures to this is very easy. You just need to um, create the respective entries in the multi-text and in the table inside of core that we're going to create in a moment. Once we have all these values entered, we're going to treat the grid knob the same way we treated the gate knob. It's going to go into core, and we're going to read a value out from a table that corresponds to its current position. And um, we'll use that value from the table to turn on a, another hold module in primary. So I'll just take a moment to rearrange our panel view here, and then we can hop inside of core and start working on that. So we'll end up just, we can just copy and paste the uh, gate input here and everything attached to it. And we'll just rename the input. We'll fill out some new values for our table here. So it's going to have 16 values again. And we're going to get these by dividing 96 over the value. So 96 over 256 is 0.375, over 128 is 0.75, 96 over 96 is 1, 96 over 64 is 1.5, 96 over 48 is 2, 96 over 32 is 3, 96 over 24 is 4, and so on and so forth. I know that entering all these numbers and doing all this kind of menial math is not a whole lot of fun but uh, it's not very difficult either it's not like I'm asking you to do calculus or anything it's pretty basic uh, standard algebra here all right so finally one bar has 96 96 notes so we can rename this quick bus here to grid 96 and then we're gonna duplicate the outputs for the uh, triggering the hold module and just make sure you uh, replace the second one here with the grid 96 uh, quick, bu uh, quick bus. So let's duplicate the whole hold module as well. And at this point in time, we should be able to get our numeric here to turn on when we start the MIDI clock. Um, and so, just take a second to test that. It's actually not working. And the reason it's not working um, is if you look, we actually haven't even connected the grid knob to anything. So it's not doing anything at all. So let's just wire that in. And now we can get the hold knob turning on when the clock is running. All right, so let's create a new core cell that is going to do our audio processing. And I'll create three inputs. We're going to have one input for the audio input. And if you wanted to do stereo audio, you could have two audio inputs, of course, and just duplicate everything that, the, that it's attached to. And we're going to have an input for the repeat hold module, and we'll have another one for the record hold hold module. So these are our three things that can be happening. Either we're sending the input directly to the output, 
That's the first option. The second option is that we're recording the input to playback later. And the third option is that we're currently playing back something that's been previously recorded. So to implement our first option, if the repeat value is zero, that means our effect is off. So I'll create a quick bus called effect off. And I'm going to store the input in a latch. And that latch will be triggered by the effect off quick bus here. So anytime our effect is off, we're simply going to take the input and store it and then read it. So that's our first option. If the repeat value is on, then we want to check, well, are we currently recording something to play back, or are we currently um, playing back something that's already been recorded? And we can know that by um, checking the value of the record input. So we'll compare the record input to zero as well. If the record input is greater than zero, that means we're currently recording. Otherwise, we're currently playing back. So I'll create two more quick buses for these options. And we can name them uh, record and playback. So if the record value is on, I want to take the input and store it in an array. So I'll create a new array, and I'll give it 441,000 values, which is equal to 10 seconds of time at the standard 44.1 kilohertz sample rate. So we can both write to that while we're recording, and then we'll read from it while we're playing back. So we'll create the write, and then let's create a read macro as well. OK, so to store our values, we can do the same thing we did here. We just take the input stored in a latch. The latch is going to get triggered by the record quick bus, and the value flows directly into the array. So we just need to now, oh, and then we'll also have that value flow to the output as well, because at this point we're recording a sound to playback later, but we still want that sound to be playing uh, to the output as well, so we can hear it. And the last input for this merge is going to come from our write macro here. All right, so one more thing I want to know is I want to get some specific events when the record button starts and when the record button ends. So when the record button starts, I'll have a quick bus called start record. And when it ends, I'll have a quick bus called start playback. And we'll use these to um, control some simple stuff in just a moment. So next I want a value that's going to control the index that we're recording at. So when we start recording, we want to start from value 0. So I'll have a latch with no input. And it's going to get triggered by the start record quick bus. So this is just setting our index to 0. We're going to read our index when the record button is on and use that as the index for our array. So we'll start storing values in our array at index 0, and then we'll add 1 for every subsequent tick of the sample clock. So whenever the record value is reading out, we'll take that store value at that position, then we'll add 1 to the record index and store it for later. So we can use the record index in our write macro here. And next we want to figure out, well, which um, index are we reading from during playback? We have our record implemented, and now we just need to get our playback implemented. So we want to set the playback 
to index 0 when the start playback event fires. I'm just going to rename all of our quick buses here, but we're basically going to keep the same structure. It's going to get a little more complex, but it'll be basically the same thing. The one thing we need to worry about is when we reach the end of our playback, we want to go back to index 0 again. So in order to do that, I'm going to take the value of our record index when the start playback fi event fires. And that's going to end up being the maximum index for our playback routine. So after we add 1 to our um, playback index, we can say, hey, is that value greater than our maximum index value? greater than or equal to our maximum index value. And if it is, then we can just set the index back to zero, which means we'll start playing from the beginning of our sound again. And if it's not, we can simply send the value um, right on through. So I'll create a latch. The value is greater than or equal to our maximum index. We'll set it to zero. And we can just merge that with um, the other output from our router and it'll flow directly into our write module here and so this should reset our playback routine to the beginning when it reaches the end so we can play back the same recorded sound several times and we'll use the playback quick bus and the playbacks index quick bus to read from our array at the appropriate times and um, now we need to wire up our audio input and our playback and record values. And of course, like I said earlier, you can make this a stereo effect simply by duplicating the audio input to the core cell and everything that it's attached to. Alright, so we should be able to get some sort of a stutter glitch out of this at this point in time. So I'm just going to load up um, a sound from a sample pack, the free sample pack that I use for all of my stuff here. And it's actually not going to work as we'll hear in a second. So you can hear that the sound isn't playing back when the effect turns on, and the reason for this is that I neglected to set the bottom half of our compare module when creating our playback index. So just set the max index to the bottom half of this compare module. Otherwise, you're adding 1 to a value and then comparing it to 0 and saying, is this greater than 0? And it is greater than zero because you just added one to it. And then if it is greater than zero, you set it back to zero again. So what we were doing there was um, just keeping the playback index at zero the whole time. Okay, so now we have the basic beat repeat implemented and in the next videos I'll just be working on adding the rest of the features that exist it should be mostly pretty simple thank you guys for watching once again this is Salamander Anagram